In this tutorial, we will learn how to create an ocean like this, using the ocean modifier in Blender, and we'll discuss all the settings and details. Let us start with a blank new scene. We'll convert this default cube into an ocean. So select the cube and go to the modifiers tab. Then add one ocean modifier. As a result, Blender will replace the cube object with this ocean surface. By default, Blender is using this generate option under geometry, but you can also use the displace option, where the modifier gets applied to the object itself, instead of the replacement. But in all our tests, we found that the generate option works far better, so let us go with this. This is our ocean surface. We'll discuss all different settings here, but before that, let us first see the ocean in action. Currently, it does not really look like an ocean, so please expand this wave section. We have a scale factor at the top. If you increase this value, you can notice that a wave pattern is getting developed on the ocean. This scale factor determines the height of the waves. Let us go with a value of 5 for this. With this waveform, if you start the animation, you won't see anything happening. That is because we only got a still frame of the ocean for a particular moment. In order to animate this ocean with live action, we have to play with this time field. If you increase this value, you can see that the wave is moving on our ocean surface. So basically, we have to keyframe this field and animate this in order to create a live ocean. Currently we are at frame number 1. So, let us change the time field to a value of 1. And we need to insert a keyframe. Now, let us change the animation length to 500 and go to the last frame of the animation. We'll change this time field to say, 25, and insert a keyframe as well. If we now play the animation from the beginning, we'll see the ocean in live motion, and the waves moving like this. You can control the speed of this motion by changing this time value, and have a slow moving, or a fast moving ocean. Now, we'll add some suitable material for this ocean, so that it looks like ocean water. So let us turn on the rendered view mode. This light is coming from the default light, which is added by Blender, but this is not sufficient. So we have to enable the HDRI lighting. And we can little bit increase its strength as well. But remember that this is only applicable for the viewport, it won't reflect in the render output. In order to have this same effect visible in the render, you need to enable the HDRI lighting for your render. If you're new to this and not sure how to enable HDRI lighting for the render, you can check our tutorial on the same, the link is given in the video description. Let's go to the Materials tab for the ocean. Blender has added this material by default, with a principled BSDF. We'll first change its base color, and pick up something close to blue, so that it looks like deep water. And to make it transparent, scroll down to this section. Then we have to increase this transparency value all the way up to 1. And if you like, you can also play with this roughness value. Let us change it to 0.25. With that, we can play the animation once more. So we get the ocean water and the waves. But this is just a basic setup, we'll now customize other settings and make it even better. Let us go back to the ocean modifier. The first option that we have is this repeat X and repeat Y. They decide how many such tiles of ocean pieces you want in the X and the Y dimensions in order to create a bigger area of ocean from this. If we increase it to two in the X, we get two tiles joined together. Similarly, for the Y, we can get the whole thing duplicated. And, if you check it minutely, you'll notice that it is not just duplicated, Blender has joined the tiles very neatly, without any visible seam, so that it looks like a continuous object. The next important thing is the resolution value, which is 7 by default. It determines the level of details that should be present in Out Ocean. The higher is the better, but it can take much higher time to simulate a high-resolution ocean. So, we have two resolutions here. For the viewport resolution, let us use 16. And for the render output, we can use 32 or even a higher value for better result. Now, let us play the animation and watch it in action. So, you can see that the ocean now looks far better, with more resolutions, although it became little slower in the viewport. Next, we have this height field, which is an imaginary height of the ocean. It impacts the profile little bit, because theoretically, a higher depth can result in a powerful wave. You can change this height if you want, but the effect of this change may not be very significant. Next, 
we have a size factor which you can animate. The scaling of the ocean or the overall size of our ocean is controlled by this value. Then this spatial size determines the actual size of the ocean or its width in meters. If you increase this value, the surface area of the ocean will increase. But instead of using any of these size parameters, we can also control the size of the ocean by simply using these scale factors. Next in the ocean modifier, we have a field called random seed. As you can guess, this will result in a variation in the wave pattern. If you change this value, the style of the wave will change. Let us take any one particular frame. You can experiment with this and select a value that gives a good result for your setup. So, we covered this first set, we'll now go through this wave section. Let us once verify our current result. It may look little slow in the viewport, due to heavy simulation, but the actual render will be very much perfect. So we have already covered this scale factor for the wave. This smallest wave determines how much granular details you want to keep. It works like a low-pass filter. Any small wave with intensity or height below this value will get suppressed. If you change this to say 0.1, some fine details will be removed. Or, if this is changed to say 0.5, you'll see that a large part of the details got missing. It may be okay for a shallow water or for distant water bodies, but it does not look very realistic for a turbulent ocean from the close view. We can actually make this zero, so that Blender captures each and every details and the ocean texture looks much better. The next field is this choppiness. Let us change this to zero and then turn on the wireframe mode. If we now run this, you'll notice that the waves are moving only vertically, in an up and down fashion. There is not much movement in the horizontal direction on the XY plane. So instead of this, if we increase the choppiness, you can see how the wave patterns are getting distorted in the horizontal direction. Let us increase it little more, and then play the animation. The waves are now moving randomly in the XY plane, crushing with each other, and at the same time they are also moving vertically. A very high value of choppiness does not look realistic, so you can simply keep it as one for turbulent water. Then, this wind velocity is closely related with the alignment field. Right now the waves are moving in a random fashion, they are not much aligned with the direction of the wind movement. But if we increase this alignment value, the waves will start following the wind direction. So, let us change this to one. You'll see that the waves are now moving in a streamlined fashion, in a single direction along with the wind, and there is no random movement like before in the water. And, if we change it to say, 0.5, you can see some random movement now present in the water, but the overall movement of the waves is still following the wind direction. With a non-zero alignment, these two fields also get enabled. The direction field determines the direction in which the wind and the waves will move. So, if we change this direction, by say 90 degrees, the waves will start moving in this direction, along the y-axis. Let us change it back to zero. This is the default direction, which is from positive x-axis toward the world origin. This damping factor is not very important. It controls how the waves will behave when they collide with each other. A value of 0.5 looks quite perfect. Now, we'll look into another important field, which is called spectrum. Here, we have multiple options. Let us first take the swallow water. As a result, the water will become very stable without much movement. But in this case, the alignment value should be zero. And this scale factor for the wave should also have a low value. Now if you play the simulation, you will get this effect, which looks like some steady water body and no turbulent waves. Then we have the option of established ocean, which is quite similar to the swallow water. However, you can change the wave scale for this, and get slightly higher waves. Let us go back to Turbulent Ocean. We will use a higher value in the wave scale. And let us also change the alignment factor, maybe to 0.5. Now, we'll look into another very important field, which is called foam. So let us enable this, and expand it as well. This option adds a layer of foam, or bubbles, on the peak areas of the waves. And this makes the ocean look very realistic like a real ocean. But in order to see its effect, we need to set up the material correctly. So let us open the shader editor on this side. We have a principled BSDF and a material output node by default. 
Let us create some room here for the other nodes. Now from the Add menu, add one, mix shader, and place it here. Then we need to add an emission shader for this socket. So from the shader group, add one emission shader, and place it before this. Then connect its output to the second input of the mix shader. We need an attribute node for the emission, in order to connect it to the foam layer. So go to the add menu, and add one, attribute node, and place it before the emission shader. Then connect its color output, to the color input of the emission shader. Perfect. So the entire setup looks like this. Here, we have to type some name for this attribute node. Let us call it, foam. You can use any name in this, nothing specific, but this same name should also go to the data layer, in the foam section. This will connect the foam data to the emission shader, in order to create the correct effect. So, we have to just type the same name here, which is foam in our case. As soon as we do that, you can see that little bit of foam is visible on the wave peaks. But we need some stronger foams for our ocean. So we have to increase the strength of this emission shader. Maybe we go with 5. Now some more foam is visible on the tips of wave crests. We can further increase the visibility by changing this coverage factor. Say we make it 0.1. And we get lots of foam on the water, which adds a different dimension to the realism of our ocean. So ultimately, you need to play with these settings, change the parameters here and there, and find out what works best for your scene. Let us expand the shader editor. In order to create a sharp and a prominent foam layer, we have to increase the strength field. And at the same time, the coverage should have a low value. Let us change it back to zero. And we'll increase the strength field to say 20. We are done with the shader editor. Our setup is finally complete, so let us run it. We got just enough amount of foam on the water, and it looks very realistic. Now you can add a seashore or some coconut trees to replicate a sea beach. If we render this with this current setup, we'll get a result like this. The ocean now looks quite realistic with the foams. But I think the foam is too much here, we should probably take out some of the foams. So, we need to reduce the coverage, and here we can even use a negative value to reduce the amount of foams. Let us change it to minus 0.1. Now the foam is less, it is present only on the tip of the waves. This looks little more realistic. Once you are satisfied, expand this bake section. You should bake the simulation data from here, before going for the final render. And there is one field called foam fade. It controls the amount of foam that accumulates over time and sits on the wave surface before fading out. It is available only when we bake the data. So let us start the baking process, and the progress is displayed here. Apart from this foam fade, there are a few more reasons why we should bake this before rendering. Baking generates the foam maps and the displacement maps, which you can use in another render engine. So let us look at the render output. You can use this for a turbulent ocean, with high waves and the foam effect. We have also added a sky behind the ocean. And this is another output with the swallow water. We did not add any foam here. That's all for today. You can experiment with the setup and create your own variations. I hope you like this tutorial. Thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe to this channel.